There are several strategies for preventing accidental detonation of nuclear weapons, including the storage methods and locations of nuclear components. Nuclear weapons have the potential to kill millions of people, wipe entire cities off the face of the earth, and render the soil in the fallout zone infertile for generations. According to the Arms Control Association, the combined arsenal of the nine nuclear-armed states – China, France, India, Israel, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States – amounts to approximately 13,000 nuclear warheads. This raises a number of obvious questions, such as the likelihood of accidental detonation and the measures taken to prevent unintended explosions. While some early nuclear weapons were fragile or unstable, modern nuclear weapons are meticulously designed with high levels of safety, security, and reliability. This means that accidental detonation is extremely unlikely. In its normal stored environment, U.S. nuclear weapons are not supposed to have more than a one in a billion chance of a premature detonation. In an abnormal environment, it's one chance in a million. An abnormal environment could include situations such as a fire in a nuclear weapon storage area or a plane crash carrying nuclear weapons. Both of these examples have occurred in the past, and the nuclear weapons did not explode. Weapons are designed to be single point safe, so if one explosive component accidentally detonates, the probability of a nuclear yield exceeding four kilotons should not exceed one in a million. For comparison, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima had a yield of 15 kilotons. To ensure that nuclear bombs have only a one in a billion or one in a million chance of detonating after any accident or incident, the U.S. Department of Energy mandates that these weapons incorporate multiple sets of strong links, weak links, and barriers nested within each other. Furthermore, each safety subsystem is largely independent of the others. This directive ensures that the different weapon subsystems are sufficiently independent. Using two of these safety subsystems provides a safety level of one in a million, while using three provides a safety level of one in a billion. To this day, only two atomic bombs have been dropped with the sole purpose of causing mass death and destruction. The bombings of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6 and 9, 1945, respectively, which resulted in the deaths of approximately 214,000 people and inflicted serious injuries and illnesses on hundreds of thousands of others. Over the past 80 years, our understanding of how nuclear weapons work has expanded to such an extent that today's weapons are much more powerful and potentially devastating. The B-83, the most powerful bomb in the United States nuclear arsenal, has a maximum yield of 1.2 megatons, making it 60 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. The Nuclear Weapons Archive suggests that 650 of these weapons are currently deployed by the United States. Considering what is at stake, what protocols exist to prevent death and destruction? Some of the most important safety measures include thorough monitoring of components and timely replacement of outdated or redundant modules or parts. Nuclear weapons have components with limited service life, particularly the so-called boosting gas that provides the thermonuclear fuel, said Blick. Fusion occurs when two light atoms join or fuse together to form a heavier one. However, when the radioactive material present in nuclear weapons decays, it needs to be replenished in order. For example, tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, has a half-life of only 12.33 years, meaning that half of its quantity decays within that time. This means that weapons containing tritium need to be carefully monitored. Other components also have limited service lives, so the weapons need to be refurbished periodically. The longest-lived component of nuclear weapons is the plutonium pit, which can have a service life of over 100 years. These pits are the key central elements of nuclear warheads. They are spherical shells of plutonium, typically about the size of a soccer ball. When a nuclear weapon detonates, the plutonium triggers a small nuclear reaction. This, in turn, creates a more substantial secondary explosion in the main nuclear charge. In simpler terms, the pit contains the material that allows the nuclear weapon to become a bomb. Modern nuclear weapons have what are called use control measures, which prevent their unintended detonation.
For example, the warhead of a missile must meet certain conditions before it can explode, so that it cannot, or at least it is highly unlikely to, detonate in its silo or on board its submarine. Furthermore, modern nuclear weapons have been carefully designed so that when they are in an inactive state, the materials required to combine and create a nuclear explosion are separated from each other. Nuclear weapons incorporate a total of six safety devices to prevent unintended detonation. According to Bell, deliberate actions are required to initiate a nuclear weapon explosion. Typically, this is done in one of two ways. One method used in so-called gun-type devices is to shoot one piece of highly enriched uranium into another piece of highly enriched uranium to bring the two pieces together to achieve the critical mass and trigger an explosion, he explained. This is the simplest type of nuclear weapon and the type of bomb that the United States used in Hiroshima during World War II. An alternative, more complex but capable of producing a more powerful explosion, involves taking a hollow sphere of plutonium and crushing it into a solid ball to create the critical mass that will then detonate. However, since the material is not in a critical mass state when the weapon is simply idle, there is little risk of spontaneous detonation. This type of design, known as an implosion device, was what the United States used in Nagasaki. While it is important to establish measures to ensure that nuclear weapons do not detonate on their own, other considerations require significant time and contemplation. It is more about preventing unauthorized use, theft, etc., rather than preventing them from detonating outright. It would be difficult for an ordinary person to detonate a nuclear weapon if they stumbled upon one. In the United States, for example, there are devices called Permissive Action Links PLs, built into nuclear weapons that make it very difficult to arm or launch a nuclear weapon without proper authorization or codes. However, some individuals possess significantly more nuclear energy than others, and the ability to fire a weapon at will, rather than any kind of accidental detonation, is much more likely to be the cause of any future disaster-related bomb. In essence, there are no checks and balances to prevent, for instance, the U.S. president from issuing an order to launch nuclear weapons. In fact, the entire system is essentially set up so that they can do it. That's what keeps me up at night, much more than concerns about accidents or the spontaneous detonation of nuclear weapons. Storage locations for nuclear warheads are classified as state secrets and not publicly disclosed. Each state possessing nuclear weapons determines its strategies and storage locations in accordance with national security requirements. Nuclear warheads are stored with special caution and under strict control. The specific details of nuclear warhead storage are classified and not disclosed. However, in general terms, nuclear warheads are typically stored in secret depots, usually located in military bases or secured areas. These depots are protected by physical barriers, including fences, security personnel, and video surveillance systems. Nuclear warheads are usually stored to protect them from physical damage, impacts, vibrations, and other external influences. Often, different components of nuclear warheads, nuclear core, explosive device, control systems, etc., may be stored separately from each other for security reasons and to prevent unauthorized assembly of a complete warhead. It is important to note that nuclear warheads are stored in accordance with international norms and agreements, such as the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Each state possessing nuclear weapons is responsible for the security and proper storage of its nuclear arsenal. However, if a nuclear warhead were to detonate in a storage facility alongside other warheads, the consequences could be catastrophic. The explosion of a nuclear warhead could trigger a chain reaction and activate other warheads leading to multiple explosions and radiation contamination of the surrounding area. Due to the potentially catastrophic consequences of a nuclear warhead explosion, governments strive to prevent such situations through strict control and security of nuclear weapons, as well as by strengthening measures to prevent unauthorized access and the illicit proliferation of nuclear materials. How is nuclear weapons transported? Nuclear weapons are transported with special care and in compliance with strict international norms and agreements. The main methods of transporting nuclear weapons involve specialized transport containers. 
Nuclear warheads can be housed in specially designed containers that ensure maximum safety. These containers protect the weapons from external influences and prevent unauthorized access. Special convoys consisting of multiple transport units, accompanied by armed guards and security specialists, are used for transporting nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons can be moved using military transport, such as airplanes, military ships, or railway cars. Transportation takes place under strict supervision and with adherence to all necessary safety measures. It is important to note that the details and processes of nuclear weapons transportation are classified and strictly controlled by governments. This is done to ensure security, prevent unauthorized access, and comply with international agreements on nuclear non-proliferation. Thank you for watching till the end. Subscribe to our channel and see you next time.